Hi, I am Timur Sol and you are watching Basically Feywild, a show where I talk about things Feywild related. And in the last episode, I've been talking about magic items and we were creating 27 distinct magic items based on uh, 25 monsters that you can find in uh, different source books in Dungeons and Dragons. In this episode, we will be talking a little bit about how to get such items. Um, obviously, you can just have the items in any magical shop or uh, as a loot in any um, any uh, horde, dragon horde or whatever you want in your games. You can have it as a loot from a random, um, random monsters anywhere. But you can also have them in a special place. And the special place could be the famous goblin market. Goblin markets or the goblin markets, sometimes it's singular, sometimes it's plural, is something that is also very um, stirring for the imagination and very uh, stimulant for the imagination. Uh, the goblin markets are something that uh, is very commonly used in different pop culture books, shows, and so on. It's these are the places uh, of pure magic and pure wonder. These are the places that you enter and uh, you are attacked with a whole uh, slew of um, colors, of smells, of creatures that shouldn't even exist. The Goblin Market is the high peak of the strangeness of the Feywild. And this will be our topic today. The name Goblin Market comes from a poem, a poem that was written in the 19th century in 1862, if I remember correctly, by uh, Christina Rossetti. It was a poem. I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna recall the whole poem over here because it's uh, simply too long. Uh, but it's a really, really pretty poem. Uh, it's uh, it's got a nice, nice rhythm and all. Um, the poem talked about Laura and Liz Lizzie, sisters that lived near a creek. And one day they started to hear voices that were um, telling them to come into the creek, come visit our goblin market, come see our wares. And the girls obliged. They uh, they took uh, the, the furthest, the quickest route to the to the goblin market. And one of the girls um, decided to taste the fruit that the goblin had. She paid with a lock of her hair because it was golden, so it's, uh, she, she said she doesn't have any money on her, no copper, no silver, no gold, and the goblins uh, responded that, oh, but you have golden, gold on your head, so that would be okay. So she paid with her hair and um, she ate the most incredible, juiciest and tastiest fruit that she ate in her whole life and um she as it's in feywild uh, quite common she phased out for a couple of days or uh, or or for some time and when she returned back home the only thing she, that she could think about was the fruit but she stopped hearing the uh, calling from the creek and her st hair started to go gray her skin started to also uh, turn more ashen like she started to lose um the will to live her sister did hear the creek calling but since she was the only one that could hear it only she could enter the goblin market and she went to the goblin market and um, she refrained from tasting the fruit uh, although the goblins had a lot of uh, different ways to convince her to eat the fruit uh, including um, squishing or squashing the fruit all over her body so she was uh, drenched in uh, the juices of the fruit but she didn't taste it so she didn't lose her mind as her sister and she went back home and uh, luckily uh, after a second taste of the fruit the first sister uh, got back to health and the end of the poem is that they both uh, had uh, later on in their lives they had husbands and children and they uh, had poems and tales about not going to the goblin market because it's uh, simply so dangerous so that's the um, that's the origin of the name Goblin Mark, and it is for fans of D&D and fans of fantasy, it might be slightly misleading because of the goblin in the name. 
What Miss Rossetti probably meant when she was uh, talking about goblins were probably men. Uh, simple men that would lead astray, lead astray a good woman. Uh, so that was probably the interpretation that would be um, considered the most um, significant or the most on point when it comes to, uh, to that poem and to its interpretation, its literate. Uh, interpretation so goblins were simply a representation of something the representation of uh cruelness or um vulgarity or savageness of the men uh in the Victor victorian uh, era so we get from that that the goblin market is not necessarily a market led by goblins as we know them in the fifth edition dungeons and dragons goblins had a uh, quite colorful history and fantasy. I'm not talking about only about Dungeons and Dragons, I'm also talking about other pieces of fantasy where you can find goblins. Uh, they are sometimes small, sometimes they are slightly bigger. Uh, they are usually mischievous, although there's a variant of the goblins, uh, which are called hobgoblins, which are on the other side considered usually uh, benevolent. So there's that. Um, and when we talk about goblin markets, we not necessarily mean goblins, be it hobgoblins, goblins, or whatever. We mean a space where, uh, where the market exists and it houses various inhabitants. The vendors are not necessarily goblin. Usually, actually, they are not goblin. Usually they are uh, some awkward and strange creatures that you can find in uh, different parts of the fantasy world in which you uh, in which you have your in which you have your game. If you are wondering how the markets came into existence, well, there is no clear answer to that in any lore that I found. Actually, uh, the most common. Uh, explanation for this in fantasy and other fantasy settings and other other fantasy worlds is uh, um, there are two or three uh, uh, three explanations one is that it consists of refugees from different parts of um, the multiverse so folk that some way in some way found the existing market so this conception tells you that um, the market is some kind of independent entity that just lures such folk uh, to itself, that it's been there uh, forever, just as uh, other material planes or other, uh, other planes of existence, that it's just part of reality and nobody created the market per se. Uh, this would explain how the magic of the tokens or magic of, um, of the market works, by the way. Another example or another idea is that um, the market uh, evolved uh, as an answer to a need. So you would have these plane shifting individual individuals that would uh, shift from one plane of existence to another plane of existence and buy here, sell there. So they would be simple merchants. And these merchants that were uh, shifting planes grew uh, tired of this and uh, due to the need of security of feeling secure and feeling safe and they bundled up into groups and in such a way the groups started to lead a less nomadic way of life and more stationary and in this way uh, the goblin markets started to exist and grew simply exponential with um, with time um, this episode will be divided into two episodes and uh, the second episode will be divided uh, devoted to fleshing out a goblin market in this part we will be talking only about the lore and the basics of what a goblin market is so if you're interested in more uh, specifics or more concrete um, examples you will have to wait one week until the next episode is up goblin markets don't uh, exist Permanently, They can exist once every nine years, every nine days, every full moon, things like that. Uh, we've seen similar uh, mechanics 
with fake portals where they would have specific um, requirements for them to appear um, they would need to be activated by a song of a child or by uh, by jumping into a puddle during a full moon in a specific place in the forest so you have this very very specific um, this option for very very specific um, requirements to be met before you can even enter a, um, a goblin market a great example of the goblin market was um, can be found in um, one of the books by neil gaiman uh, Star stardust uh, if you've read or watched because it has been also made into a movie uh, you probably already know what i'm talking about if no please let me read you just a small small snippet from the book itself for every nine years the folk from beyond the wall and over the hill set up their stalls and for a day and a night the meadow played host to the fairy market and there was for one day and one night in nine years commerce between the nations there were wonders for sale and marvels and miracles there were things undreamed of and objects unimagined he passed the stall in which five huge men were dancing to the music of, uh, of a lubrious hurdy-gurdy being played by a mournful-looking black bear. He passed a stall where a balding man in a brightly colored kimono was smashing china plates and tossing them into a burning bowl from which colored smoke was pouring, all the while calling out to the passerby. Later, at twilight, a different kind of people came out. There was a crier who cried news as a modern newspaper prints headlines. The master of Stormhold suffers a mysterious malady. The hill of fire has moved to the fastness of Dean. The squire of garments only air is transformed into a grunting pig wing. And would for a coin expand further on those stories. The sunset and a huge spring moon appeared. High already in the heavens. A chill breeze blew. Now the traders retreated into their tents, and the visitors to the market found themselves whispered at, invited to partake of numerous wonders, each available for a price. There are many fantastic ways to depict a goblin market. You can search either for a goblin market or a fairy market. You can look up literature. Uh, there are many, many fantastic descriptions, and I would be a liar. Uh, to tell you that I have a better description than, for example, Neil Gaiman. Uh, it's maybe possible, but uh, not plausible at this point of time. So what we're going to do in this episode, we are going to talk about the Goblin Market as an entity. We're going to talk about its origins, how it works, about the rules, how to get in, what words there are, um, what security measures you can find. We're not going to talk about the description of the market. You can envision the market as you will. Uh, it needs to be colorful. It needs to be odd. It needs to be extravaganza. It needs to be everything that uh, you can imagine. It's a carnival. It's a festival. It should be at the same time colorful, dangerous. It should be um, frivolous. But at the same time, it should be keeping rules. There should be things happening all the time in the Goblin Market. That's why the Goblin Market is so incredible. Your players need to feel like children in a carnival. Like the first visit to a circus, for example. That's what you want to achieve. And it's hard as hell to do that. But with a good attitude, you can pull it off. The first thing that I would do when you're designing your own goblin market would be designing at least 10 vendors and at least 20 type of bystanders or passerbys or whatever strange creatures that constitute the market so that each time the players look around you have a new piece of information for them and that's how you build tension and that's how you build the awkwardness of the goblin market one extremely important and profound piece of information that you need to remember about goblin markets is that goblin markets is not genies and freddies it's not like every single vendor over there has some magical power and that will in some way uh, turn out to be a simple wish spell it's not like that it's um definitely more complicated 
and the fame market as a entity has some powers some possibilities some um, um, ways of altering reality but it's not like you go in and you find the answer to each and every question that you want to pose it's not like you can find each and every weapon that you need in the current situation in your game uh, it's far more complicated goblin vendors goblin market vendors uh, have distinct powers similarly as the archfey but the archfey are not gods and the goblin vendors are not gods also they are uh, simple entities that due to the strange weaves of the Feywild can influence the Feywild in one way or another. Uh, so, okay, who knows about the goblin market? How, uh, how do you come upon the information that a goblin market exists? A goblin market is usually an open secret. So, people talk about it and um, people know that it exists. People know that, that it is somewhere, probably over here but it's not something that is um that you can just stumble upon it's not like you're gonna walk through a city and all of a sudden you are in a goblin market you have to know how to get in to um get inside uh, so everyone knows about the market but nobody usually knows how to get in and this is a strategy it's a marketing strategy um it's selling interest more than uh, selling entrances the goblin market wants you to visit the goblin market but it doesn't want anyone to visit the goblin market especially when we're talking about mundane uh, commoners from uh, some village of some sort they're not the clientele that are that is um, interesting for the vendors at the goblin market not everyone can appreciate goblin wares that you can find in the market so uh, as mentioned commoners wouldn't be welcome but adventurers that's something whole different especially that adventurers also have often things memories and items that they can sell on the goblin market that later on the vendors can make a profit from so uh, there's no direct marketing there is no flyers there's no posters there's no nothing like that uh, there is however a word-to-mouth marketing system that could lead you towards the idea that a goblin market is somewhere in the vicinity so you have to keep your ears and eyes open uh, you have to listen if people are, have rumors or something like that in the vicinity similar as to uh, finding a fey portal to uh, to the fey wild so how do you find a market you can either keep your ears and eyes open as mentioned um, you can just listen to some rumors that would uh, lead you on track of the market but remember that the market is not reputable but is welcoming so it's not like it's impossible it's um, it's open to those who are willing to listen and search for it so there should be if you're a dm there should be uh, rather clear signals in your game that would indicate hey go towards this uh towards this entrance towards this archway and you will find the entrance to the goblin market all oh, or hey listen to this guy or follow this guy he will lead you to the goblin market um so what how else could you find a goblin market you could probably and this is something that i've seen used in a couple of a uh, couple of literature pieces you could find a guide to the goblin market that's also very very common and it's very uh common from the fourth edition i think it comes uh that you um when you hire a guide the guide is already a signal that there's something strange with this market that there's something strange going on uh, so the guide would for example um take awkward routes through the city to get you to from point a to point b or he would ask you to dance all the way to the goblin market or he would ask you to sing in a specific spot or he would ask for an absurd uh, reward for him being him or her being a guide so you can find a guide that is awkward in your world and um, for me a great example of this 
I will again um, reference uh, an anime that is that is um, popular right now, Tressa. Uh, if you uh, if you recall, if you watched it, there's a um, NPC of um, of a goblin-like creature that lives in the sewers. That's a, exactly uh, the feel of a guide that I would give in my game uh, if I would like to lead my players to a goblin market. That's exactly the thing. The strangeness, the awkwardness. Um, the strangeness of the rewards that you get, this is this is something that I would go for. Um, how else could you go? You could also follow someone. You can just uh, straight up um, make a simple investigation and uh, you can see that someone has awkward, uh, has a strange uh, cape, for example, that uh, glitters on the inside or has specific weapon that is very very peculiar uh, so that's also something you can do you can just follow uh, another adventure or someone else and this could lead to a interesting encounter and uh, what you can also do if you're not that hot on role play and such situation you can also have your players simply roll an intelligence check an arcana check maybe an investigation check to find some tracks find some leads um, and later on find how to get inside the goblin market. While finding a goblin market should be relatively easy for those who are willing to find it, getting inside might be slightly more difficult, especially that most goblin markets will be in some kind, in some way uh, secured by magic wards or in other ways some magical effect. Um, you might think of it as the spell the sigil and wards or and or guardians or something like that so the whole vicinity of the market exists in something like a demi plane it could be on our plane of existence it could be in a different plane of existence but the main thing is that it is mm, somewhat shifted in one side of an or another so it's hard to pinpoint where it exactly is and to pinpoint it you need to get uh, the info on how to get on the in, into into the market itself so you might have an entrance only from one side of a cemetery the market could be on a cemetery and the entrance could be only from one side and only during uh, a full moon or, or only during a crescent moon the market could be in a place uh, in a sewer for example but only if you uh, make an offering of blood for example before entering a specific part of the sewer um, there are many ways in which you can hide the market this is not exactly the topic of today's episode but you get the idea uh, you might need to make it somewhat hard to get inside so the one thing is getting to know that the market exists. The second thing is uh, finding a route to the market or relative a relative placement on the map where it roughly is. And the third thing is gaining entrance to the market, and that could be the hardest part. It might you might need information, you might need um, some specific lore, you might need a guide, you might need something else that will allow you to get inside for obvious reasons the market must be secure and besides the magical wards that uh, fend off anyone that is um, unwelcome to the market you also have physical security in the market itself so you would find probably the most stereo stereotypical um, classic cliche even bodyguards that you can find in uh, in different fantasy novels books and series so huge ogres with uh, with leather armors and huge clubs made out of uh, trees or something like that giants um, and other humongous creatures that are mm, a synonym or symbol of physical power but the market itself has a way to protect itself from um from both vendors and buyers that are in somewhat in opposition with the market rules because 
because each market has its own rules and we'll talk about the rules in a second or two but first um, uh, a few more things about how to keep security and how to keep the market secure besides typical physical bodyguards that you can find in also material world uh, markets um, so besides the brutes that uh, just scare you off with their physicality and with their strength you also might need to pledge to the market itself uh, this is something uh, hard to explain or because it is somewhat awkward um, you pledge to the market that you will be um, obedient to the rules of the market typical rules of the market would be no violence especially towards the sellers um, no refunds no negotiations unless the negotiation is part of another deal and once a deal is made it is made um, so these three or four rules would be the basic rules of the market once you enter the market you pledge to it that you will oblige to these rules you can do it uh, and if you're a dm in your game you can do it in different ways you can ask the players for a drop of blood you can ask them to eat something specific before they enter what i like is the idea of tokens so you pledge to the market you get a token a physical token it could be for example a wooden tooth uh, on a leather strap or something like that mm, and uh, the token is a uh, something that you can lose so there there's a whole um, plot uh, stuff going on here you can have um, you can have a plot hook over here so you have to keep it really really safe the token is also something that when the sellers see it they know that they can sell you an item so without the token you cannot buy and the third thing the token is also magical if you um, behave violently or try to renegotiate a deal that has been made the token as magical um, a magical physical object will interact with you in one way or another and this is a whole different topic how you want to punish your players for not abiding with the rules um, but this is an idea that I like the most so physical tokens uh, that act as tickets that can be stolen that can be plot hooks and uh, that interact with you in one way or another and speaking about losing your tokens um, there is obviously some risk connected with going to a goblin market uh, the first risk would be the thing that I talked about before a second losing your token uh, if you lose your token you might be considered a unwelcome guest and as an unwelcome guest you are not um, safeguarded by the rules so the violence towards you is something that is plausible or acceptable because you are not the part of the market besides losing your token as adventures are they might be uh, an interesting object for some archfey or some other bigger entity that um, wants to kidnap you and um, wants the bard of the party to be the bard in the castle of the archfey for example that's uh, something from the top of my head um, so uh, although you are secured by uh, the market and by the laws of the market you can at the same time uh, sometimes uh, find yourself in a situation where someone decides that it's worth the risk to um, to somehow bend the rules or uh, for example and this is something that is quite common you uh, talk with a vendor and he suggests a deal but he suggests to make it outside of the of the walls of the market so uh so on some neutral ground because over there he will be able to give you a better deal than he is obliged to do right here right now and once you meet uh, the vendor outside it becomes an ambush and you get trapped over there or you just get sedated uh, drugged or uh, whatever else 
by some magical means um so there's also something like this that can be going on uh, and again this is something that could be a plot hook but especially this is a risk of going to a shady uh shady market in the middle of nowhere when we go to a market that is considered shady and that is the goblin market it's not about finding the thing that you need uh, the thing that you want to buy it's more about finding uh, a deal that doesn't have anything hidden inside that doesn't have a curse slapped underneath uh, the price tag uh, that doesn't have um, any additional hooks that would suggest that there's something off with the deal uh, it's more about having the deal be laid out straight so one of the rules of the market is no fake advertising um usually uh but that doesn't mean that using creative words or um just simply using your creativeness to uh, distract the players uh, is a no-go exactly the opposite the markets are famous for um for making bad deals sound good that's what the market is all about that was thriving on that's why it wants new um, adventurers and new buyers because the new buyers don't know exact rules if you don't have a guide and you're not careful enough you might get yourself in a deal that is really really bad and you can go back to the fey bargains episode to watch um, some examples of bad uh, bad bargains uh, how sour they can get um, especially the language bargains that are especially problematic but that's again a whole a uh, whole different topic so it's not about finding the perfect material but because that doesn't exist the perfect sword doesn't exist it's about finding the perfect sword and understanding all of the drawbacks that are connected with the specific deal that you are making another thing would be haggling about that deal okay so what can we buy at the goblin market well the best answer probably would be everything um you can obviously obviously buy magic items from some magic item vendor um but the market is famous for not only fake craft goods you can have a whole um whole distinct type of items that you will call fake craft they are uh, accessible only uh, in this little spot and they are all lightweight or light or have some other specific uh, trait that is connected with the Feywild and that's it um, but these are items these are simple things that you can find you can also find vendors that uh, offer supernatural supernatural gifts so in our games that would be defeats proficiencies skills uh, perhaps languages perhaps advantages on some specific roles expertise um, proficiencies and saving throws things that we normally would have to train really hard long and invest a lot of gold to get so uh, for example the tasha's uh, cauldron of everything offers um, a way in which you can retrain your subclass on the market you could do it just like that by buying someone's fate uh, because fates and destinies are also something that could be one of the deals that you can find on a, on a market uh, imagine um, the fate of a brilliant bard that was killed in a freak accident somewhere his fate is already somewhere in the world and by accident by chance some goblin vendor has this piece of fate and is willing to sell you this piece of fate and you can become a better bard and gain an advantage in all your performance checks for the rest of the game for a mere price of your soul or your face or something else that you will find suitable we will talk about prices and currencies in the next episode as mentioned this will be a two-part episode and um, so in the next episode we will be talking about what you can offer as a player uh, to gain something some vendors will always try to tap into the desires of 
the players. So if on your player sheet you have an information that you are a greedy player or that your backstory uh, states that your flaw is pride, uh, the vendors are brilliant at reading people and their clients. So they know what to offer to which uh, player. Um, they might even seem as if they are somewhat metagaming and they know more about you than they should know. Uh, that's because they are still emotional beings often, they work in the Feywild, they are the goblin market of the Fey. So they know you probably in some regards better than you know yourself. So for example, if we're looking at uh, the seven deadly sins you would have um uh, gluttony would be um, probably i don't know wines that are uh, impossible to get or the sweetest of cakes or uh, drugs or things that taste so that you will never um feel the tastes again similar to the christina uh, rossetti poem and if we're talking about lust we can have a lewd book, a peep show that is made especially for you. Um, we could have a picture drawn of your deepest desire, uh, your love interest, for example. Um, greed would be jewels, uh, expensive garments, um, clothes that suggest that you are uh, that you are wealthy. Sloth would be maybe a drug that makes you feel mellow and good in what you are doing. A book of stories that make you feel that you live the story so you don't have to do it yourself. Uh, wrath could be a punching, uh, um, a punching board. Uh, each time you punch it, it, it uh, makes a whimpering noise uh, as if it was a living creature or a set of brass knuckles uh bloodied on on the ends envy um could be a royal's signet ring uh it could be a curse for your rival um or some blackmail material for you for example pride would be mirrors that always are flattering um it could be cosmetics it would could be artwork with you on it so different things um that you or your character finds um, important for their uh, for their personality i mentioned already destinies and fates it doesn't have to be uh, the bard fate it could be a fate of being uh, immensely wealthy it could be the destiny of being the prince of some part of of the kingdom um, these could be destinies and fates of other people and um, this is a way to shift your whole character around. Uh, just remember if you are the DM to spice the deals. Um, make the deals sound good but be uh, much more complicated than the players could anticipate. And this concludes the first part of the Goblin Market episode. In the next episode, we will be talking about mechanics uh, of haggling, mechanics of selling and buying on the Goblin Market. I will also uh, suggest a few vendors that you can use in your Goblin Market with their personalities, with what they sell, what they buy, how they look like. I believe that starting from the NPCs and from the vendors, will give you good results when you're thinking about your own um, your own goblin market in your own world. Uh, I hope to see you around in one week and um, bye!